In this video, we're going to learn how to implement the chain of responsibility design pattern in Python. Design patterns describe solutions to recurring design problems, and the chain of responsibility design pattern is a behavioral design pattern that's focused on communication between objects. In the chain of responsibility pattern, we have at least one type of handler object, though we may have several types of handler objects with the interface for a handler object defined by a base class. Handler objects are capable of handling a request of some kind maybe a request to carry out some computation or a request to create a log message. The handler objects are capable of maintaining a reference to another handler object. And when using the pattern, we arrange these objects in a chain where each object references the next object in the chain, except the last object in the chain. We can then imagine that we have a sender object that sends a request to the first handler object in the chain. The handler objects will then handle the request and pass the request along to the next handler in the chain. In some versions of the pattern, the first object in the chain that is able to handle the request will not pass it along to the next object in the chain. In other versions of the pattern, even if an object in the chain is able to handle the request, the request is still passed along to the next object in the chain. Let's implement the chain of responsibility pattern in Python, and we'll make a version of the pattern for recording log messages. So oftentimes larger software applications will implement different types of logging to trace the execution of the program for debugging purposes. So throughout the program source code, function calls will be made to a logger of some kind, and log messages will be written somewhere, like the console or a file or a database. And sometimes the program will write the same log message to multiple different places. We may even want to configure and change which places we write the log messages to, possibly even at runtime when the program is executing this is the type of problem that the chain of responsibility pattern can help us to solve. We'll make multiple logger classes that record log messages in different ways. And we'll use the chain of responsibility pattern to chain them together so that when we send a log message to the first object in the chain, it gets passed along to all the logger objects in the chain. The first thing we'll do is import the abstract base class module to help us make our handler object interface. We're going to implement our handler object interface as an abstract base class. We'll call it logger because that's what it's going to do is specify the logger interface. We'll make it a derived class of ABC to make it an abstract base class. We're going to make derived classes that are going to implement specific versions of loggers to log to a file, a database, and the console. When a logger object is instantiated, it's going to be given the next logger in the chain. And we'll keep a reference to that logger as a member variable. So we'll say self dot underscore underscore next logger is equal to the next logger object that is given to the init method. We're gonna make an abstract method called make entry. This is gonna specify exactly how the log entry is made. We're making it an abstract method because we're gonna leave it to the derived classes to fill in how this method is going to work by providing a definition for it. So we'll say def make entry self message. And for this definition here, we'll just say pass. The log method is going to specify the logic for passing on the request to the next logger in the chain. We're going to use the make entry method in this method to actually make the log message occur. So we'll say def log self and message. And the first thing it's going to do is call make entry to actually make the log entry given the message. Then it's going to carry out the logic to potentially pass on this request to the next logger in the chain. We're going to check to see if the next logger is none. If the next logger is none, this means the current logger is the last logger in the chain. In that case, we're just going to return. Otherwise, we're going to pass the message on to the next logger in the chain by calling that logger's log method. So we'll have self dot underscore underscore next logger dot log message to pass that log message along to the next logger in the chain. Now we're never going to actually instantiate a logger base class object. We're going to instantiate instances of the derived classes that are going to implement individual versions of logging for different circumstances, like logging to a file and so forth. 
we have this abstract method here, make entry. That means we have to implement the make entry method in these derived classes in order for them to be able to be instantiated. So we'll make a console logger first. So we'll have class console logger and we'll make this a derived class of logger. And then we'll implement the make entry method to specify how to make a log message to the console. So we'll have self message and we'll print to the console a log message. So we'll have console star star colon and we'll put the log message. Now for our file and database logger classes, we could write code to actually have them log their messages to a file and to a database. But to keep this video focused on the chain of responsibility pattern, we're just gonna have them print their messages to the console, but we'll have star star file and star star database to differentiate them. So we'll say class file logger logger. And again, we're gonna make a make entry method that's going to specify how a message is gonna be logged to a file. We'll say print star star file star star colon and we'll output the log message. And again, we'll make a database logger the same way. We'll say class database logger. It's also a derived class of logger. We'll also make a make entry method to output the log message. This time we're gonna output the log message to a database. We'll say star star database star star and we'll output the message. Now these are the classes that we're actually going to instantiate and use to form a chain. So let's actually instantiate some of these objects. We'll say console one is equal to console logger. It's gonna have none as its next logger. So this logger object is going to be the last link in the chain. Then we'll make a file logger object. And for the file logger object, we're going to give it the console logger object as its next logger object. So now they're linked. Then we'll make a database logger object and the database logger object will be given the file logger object as its next logger. Now, if we call this database logger objects log method to log a message, that message is gonna be passed along to the file logger and then to the console logger. So let's save this and give it a try. And we get the database logger, the file logger, and then the console logger being used to log this log message in their different ways. So that's basically how the chain of responsibility pattern works. Now, like I said, there are some variations on this pattern where each handler object will actually stop passing along the message to the next link in the chain, if they can actually handle the message. It just depends on what we're implementing the pattern for. That's also a valid interpretation of the pattern. One thing I should point out is that we're actually using something called the template method design pattern to help us implement this pattern. So here, this log method here is what's called a template method. It's specifying at a higher level how some algorithm is carried out. In this case, the algorithm is how to log a message and pass it along to the next logger, where make entry is what's called a helper method. The reason I've done it this way is that this reduces code duplication while also avoiding what's called the call super anti pattern. Unfortunately, Many of the chain of responsibility examples I've found online will use unnecessary code duplication by repeating the logic to pass the message to the next link in the chain in each derived class. Or they'll try to solve this problem by using the call super anti pattern, which introduces its own maintainability problems. If you're curious about these topics, I posted a video on them and we'll link to it in the description. So this is how we can implement the chain of responsibility pattern in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.